So in a previous video, I showed you how you can reconfigure a Bafang e-bike with your own settings for the motor and the controller and stuff like that and, con and change how the pedal assist works and the throttle works and all of that. Now the thing about that is you, you did need a, a Windows laptop in order to plug into the bike and run the software. Well, recently someone, um, a viewer, told me that there's now a, an, an Android app that lets you reconfigure your Bafang mountain bike and all the settings using nothing but an app. Um, now, the thing is, the, the Bafang mountain bikes, uh, they do not have Bluetooth, so you still need to physically plug into the bike with your phone. You do that, you still use you still use the USB programming cable that you would with the laptop. You still use the same USB programming cable, but then you use an OTG cable. An OTG cable is a cable that plugs into your cell phone and converts uh, you know, your cell phone connection into a regular USB connection. And if you have most modern Android phones can plug into regular USB devices. So this cable allows you to plug into an Android phone and then the app will, will be able to talk to the bike. Um, so the pro procedure is still the same. This is the controller for the e-bike. The e it plugs in here into this green connection. You unplug the controller and then you take your, your programming cable and you plug it in to the green connection here. Ooh. Once it's plugged in, you'll see the the light has come in, come on on the um, the programming cable. That's because the battery is connected, and now it's getting powered by the e-bike's battery. That's important. The light must be on before you uh, begin the process. Now I am going to plug this into my cell phone, and then I'm going to uh, show you around the software and the app. Um, so let me do that, and I'm going to probably screen capture the cell phone so you can see what's going on. The bottom here called speed. I'm about to plug the. Well, let me actually let me turn on. Let me fire up the app. This is it. It's speed with three E's. Um, now there is nothing connected, and I have not yet plugged in the USB cable. I am plugging in the USB cable now. And so now the USB cable is plugged in and now I'm going to press connect and we should be able to connect to the bike now. Allow it to connect, yes, connecting to motor. Great, now we are connected. And you can see here that it, it knows the motor I have, the firmware version, the max voltage, max current, everything about my bike which is perfect. Now, there is a display screen, which you can see here. Um, in fact, let me lift up the back of the bike and... Um, anyways, this is a, yeah, this is a display screen. So you could have your phone on a, like, mount on your bike and see things like your speed and, and um, yeah, you can even program your uh, your gear setting. I just uh, picked up the back of the bike and used the throttle to power up the bike, and you can see it works. So these are your um, these are your pedal assist numbers here in the middle that you can change, and then this is your speedometer. So this is a cool display that you can get for your e-bike, um, but I'm not here for the display. I have a nice controller on my bike. I'm here for reprogramming the bike. So I move over to the settings tab here and along the top here there are different things that you can reprogram. Um, now the, for, what, the way you do it is you need to hit the green read first because you need to read what settings are on your bike. You need the, the phone to see what settings your bike has. And then you can edit whatever setting you want and then you press right to upload the setting back to your bike. So I'm going to press read and it's reading. You can see I have 
low voltage at 41 volts because it's a 48 volt battery my current is at 18 amps um, but let's say I want th this bike is capable of up to 25 amps so let's say I set it to 20 amps to give it a little more boost um, my wheel diameter is 27 and a half inches so that's correct so now I'm going to press right processing and it says right parameters successful so now we're at 20 amps in current. I'm going to leave the screen, come back here, read it again. And you can see it says it's now, it is 20 amps inside the system, which is what I want. Now we can go to levels. These are, um, I'm going to press read so it can read all my settings. These are the pedal assist settings that, um, you get when you put it in mode one, mode two, mode three, all the way to mode nine. These are settings I discussed in my other video. I like, this is how, the, the first column here, this column in the middle here, this is your current. I like to, I like to have lower amounts of current in the lower numbers because I want to be able to go slow um, when I'm w driving between pedestrians and that on the bike path. I only want 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% assistance at the lower levels. But And then when I get on, this, on the road and I want to go fast, I can put it up to 6, 7, 8, 9 and just ramp up the current to the high numbers. So that's how I programmed it. More fine control at the lower numbers and then I just ramp it up once I start to get into the higher numbers. Speed is an artificial speed limiter that the bike has built into it. What this means is when you're pedaling, um, once you hit a certain speed limit, uh, the, pe the pedal assist just turns off. Um, so I do have speed limits set at 20%, 30%, 40% at the lower numbers, again, so that I do just don't go too fast. But once I start hitting level 5 and then 6, 7, 8, I just turn off the speed limit and the bike can go as fast as it wants with either 60%, 70%, 80% or 100% current. So um, these are all, this is one of the most important screens just to get your bike to behave the way you want it. And I like to set lower percentages and lower, you know, I want the bike to be slow in these lower numbers so that I can ride between pedestrians and not run anybody over or do 20 miles an hour on a bike trail amongst pedestrians with strollers. So I do set speed limits at the lower numbers and I do limit the current at the lower numbers. Once I start getting sort of above level 5 and above, I just ramp it up and so that the bike can go as fast as it wants. Anyways, again, set whatever percentages you want and then you press write to write those percentages to the bike and it will reprogram your bike. Pedal, um, again, press read first so that you see your settings and then edit what you want and then press right to upload those settings back to the bike. Um, there's not too many things I mess with on the, um, on the setting tab here, uh, on the pedal tab. There's really not that much that I messed with. I think I kept most of my settings the same and, um, you know, I don't think there's anything too much, too important on this that'll affect the, the bike. Throttle tab, again, press read first. Um, this, the, the important number, the important thing that I did change here is this right here, this designated assist level. What, the, by default, it's this, which says by displays command. What that means is your throttle will be linked to what pedal assist mode you are in. If you're in pedal assist one, then you're only going to get pedal assist one on the throttle. If you're in pedal assist six, you'll get pedal assist six on the throttle. I don't like that. And so I do not use this option by displays command. I do not use that. That is the default setting. I do not use that. I want my throttle to be more like a motorcycle. I want to hit the throttle and get a lot of speed so that I can use my throttle when I need to cross a street or I need to get around an object or something like that. I want my throttle to just provide instant power regardless of what pedal assist I'm in. So I force my pedal assist mode into yeah, mode 8. So by forcing it into mode 8 like I just did, I will always have pedal assist level mode, you know, level 8 on my throttle at all times. 
So when you, again, when you make the change on something you want, you press right and it now uploads back to the bike. So this app allows you to do everything that the Windows software did. Um, it's pretty cool. And as far as I can tell, it's completely free and there's no ads. So big shout out to the developer here. Um, just remember when you're on, when you're on the settings tab here, and when you go to these different tabs, first press read, then change what you want, then press write. That's how you get everything back onto the bike, your change settings. If you, if you don't read first and then write second, you're not going to, your settings are not going to make their way back onto the bike. So, um, um, anyways, I mean, that's, you know, what I have to say on this app, it's really pretty simple and pretty cool. And it just works. Honestly, I didn't have to do any messing with my Android settings or anything like that. I just plugged in the OTG cable, fired up the app and it just connected. Um, now I'm using a one plus uh, seven pro phone, but most high end phone, uh, Android phones support OTG out the box. So just plug in an OTG cable and, and, um, download this app. Um, again, the app is called, uh, it's called speed. Uh, let's see if it's, yeah, it's speed with three E's speed with three E's. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, you, you get a nice little display. If you have a permanent mount on your bike, um, you can have a nice display and use your phone as your controller, which is kind of cool. Um, now I won't do that again. I, I don't want to have the OTG cable hanging out of my phone while I'm riding my bike and an actual control, you know, an actual controller is more hardy and, and, uh, I, you know, less prone to getting broken. If I crash or something like that, I would hate to damage my phone, um, when I'm using it as my display. So I'm not going to use it as my display, but as a programming tool, it literally does everything that the windows software does. So, this thing's cool. Um, you know, props to the developer and, and, um, I think, uh, yeah, I think that I'm definitely going to use, this is definitely what I'm going to use in the future to make changes. It's not worth breaking out the windows laptop, um, to, you know, t tweak a voltage limit or a current limit or something like that. I just use my phone and, you know, the nice thing about this is even when you're riding, if you don't like a setting you've just put into the bike, you can just literally pull out the phones, plug in your OTG cable, tweak a setting again, press right and, uh, continue your ride and see if you like the new setting better. So this thing's cool. So, uh, highly recommended. Um, anyways, I uh, hope this helps and, uh, you know, I'll talk to you soon.